Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Are you looking for an iPad RAW editor to edit on the go? In 2023, there are more great choices than ever before. But not sure which one to use? Fret not! In this video, we're going to clear up the confusion as we count down the top iPad RAW editors for 2023. So let's get right into it. For this year's judging, we will be limiting the criteria to just three. The first is adjustment performance. The editor's tone adjustment tools should give visually pleasing results and recover detail even in badly exposed areas while maintaining great image quality. The second criteria is masking capability. The editor should include intuitive tools for the creation of precise masks and allow for high quality adjustments to be made in masked areas. The third criteria is other features. This include any other features that enhance the editing experience such as an intuitive UI, photo management features, etc. So with the criteria out of the way, let's get on with our list. At number four is Affinity Photo 2. Affinity Photo costs $18, one time price, and no subscription. Affinity Photo 2 sets itself apart as being the most feature filled editor on this list, as it includes both a layered editor similar to Photoshop and a raw editor in one app. We will be focusing our attention for the most part on the raw editor, which is also called the Develop Persona as this module works with the underlying RAW files. Talking about the global tone adjustment performance of Affinity, Affinity's tools give reliable results. You can see that its highlight slider is very effective in retrieving details in the bright sky and limiting its adjustments to just the highlights. The same goes for its shadow slider which recovers details well in the darker regions without affecting the brighter regions, the way such sliders are supposed to behave. The best tool of Affinity, though, is in my view its Clarity Slider, which nicely enhances local contrast without introducing artifacts. Those are the strengths of Affinity's tonal adjustments. What about its weaknesses? One main weakness is the tendency of both the shadow and highlights sliders to reduce contrast, particularly on large adjustments. You can see the shadow slider has reduced the amount of blacks in the image, while the highlight slider has reduced the amount of whites. To counterbalance this, it is best to apply a contrast adjustment or similar operation to improve image quality when editing with Affinity Photo. In terms of local adjustments, Affinity supports gradient and brush masking through its overlay panel. Of the two, the gradient mask in particular is my favored tool as it is great for balancing tones in high contrast landscapes. One issue though with its local adjustments has to do with its shadow adjustment tool which has limited effectiveness when applied to masked areas. You can see that it has a very weak brightening effect, even though I've moved the slider to maximum. For better results, I recommend to use the brightness slider in place of the shadow slider when performing local adjustments. In addition to the gradient mask, Affinity also offers brush masking, which works great with the Apple Pencil and is useful for performing adjustments on specific objects. In terms of enhancing color, while Affinity does have an HSL tool, it is not available in the Develop Persona. You need to go to Photo Persona as I'm demonstrating here. This unnecessarily adds extra work and additional steps to perform this basic task. Also, even if you do make the effort Affinity's HSL tool in my tests is not a particularly great performer in hitting the right colors accurately. 
Another weakness of Affinity's local adjustments, again referring to the developer persona, is its lack of local adjustment tool support. You can't use a clarity, sharpen, or curves adjustment on a masked area. Again, to do those tasks, you have to navigate to the photo persona, which takes more steps than necessary. So that is Affinity Photo at number four. Let's move on to number three. At number three is Capture One Pro. Capture One Pro for the iPad costs $5 a month subscription and is paid separately from the desktop app. One thing new for this year with Capture One Pro Mobile is when you subscribe to the mobile app, you can use both the iPad and the iPhone app, which was just released this year. Last year, it was iPad only. So that's a nice value added. What are the advantages of Capture One over Affinity? The main advantage is its superior image quality, which I've detailed in previous videos and mirrors what you get in the desktop app. Compared to Affinity, Capture One's tone adjustments targets the correct tones more precisely while maintaining strong detail and local contrast. Here is a comparison of the results from both raw editors. Another differentiating feature of Capture One over Affinity Photo 2 is the built-in photo manager. With Capture One, you can organize photos via albums, rate and search photos, copy and paste adjustments, Affinity has no built-in photo manager. Another strength of Capture One is its better HSL tool, which unlike Affinity's, is easier to use and enhances the colors more intuitively and precisely. So those are the strengths of Capture One. What about weaknesses? The main weakness of Capture One is unfortunately still the same as that cited last year, it still has no local adjustments capability to speak of. This means wherein in Affinity Photo, I could mask the eyes or lips to limit the adjustments to just those areas. In Capture One, you cannot. So that is Capture One at number three. Let's move on to number two. At number two is Photomator. Photomator is a new entry for this year and leaps over more established rivals with its impressive performance and pricing. Photomator costs $25 a year or $5 a month subscription, but for that, you get all the platforms, Mac, iPad, and iPhone. Photomator is available only for the Apple ecosystem. Looking at its global tone adjustments, Photomators are excellent delivering solid detail recovery, pleasing color, and fast performance on par with the leading photo editors. Photomator's UI is also, in my view, the simplest and best designed among all apps in this list. When it comes to color enhancement, Photomator's HSL adjustment tool is reliable and on par with better implementations like Capture Once. Better than Capture One though, its HSL adjustment can be applied both globally and locally. The differentiating feature, of course, of Photomator is its AI masking capability, which is fast, accurate, and on par with the best implementations. For example, in this image, I can use the linear gradient tool to reveal detail in the foreground. The select subject tool to brighten just the persons in this image, and the Select Sky tool to recover detail in the sky. If you need to brighten a particular object, Photomator also provides a masking brush, which works great with the Apple Pencil. Another differentiating factor in favor of Photomator is its entire suite of adjustments can be applied both globally and locally in masks with no reduction in performance. As a reminder, other apps like Affinity may have tools which are available in global adjustments, but not in local adjustments. So this is a great characteristic of Photomator. With all those advantages of Photomator, 
is there any reason to choose Capture One? Yes, and that reason would be image quality. As you can see from these examples, Capture One's images do have better local contrast and look sharper. For this reason, I recommend performing additional sharpening in Pixelmator Pro to improve the quality of output. If you do not know how to do this, I'll be making a video on that topic, so do watch out for that. Also, if you need a haze adjustment tool, Photomator does not have haze adjustment, while well, Capture One does. And that brings us to the number one iPad RAW editor, Adobe Lightroom Mobile. When it comes to mobile, Lightroom has traditionally, far and away, been the gold standard, and 2023 is no different. That being said, the gap between it and its competitors has narrowed, and great choices abound for those who want to avoid Adobe's ecosystem. In terms of price, in case you're willing to edit on just the iPad, the cheapest plan is to subscribe directly on the device. It costs around $5 a month, although this price may vary depending on the country you are in. To be clear, this option only unlocks the iPad app. The desktop and iPhone are not included. However, if you want all devices included, then the more expensive Creative Cloud is your only option, and that costs $10 a month. When it comes to global adjustments, Lightroom is still one of the best, offering excellent image quality throughout the adjustment range. Compared to Photometer, Lightroom still retains the edge, even though that gap is not large. You can see here that when applying the same shadows and highlights adjustments, Lightroom's edits maintain better local contrast and produces the more visually pleasing images. Talking about local adjustments, Lightroom's standout feature is also AI masking, and it was the first mobile app to introduce this technology. It's important to note though that while Lightroom's desktop app has AI object selection and AI portrait selection, Lightroom Mobile does not. As such, Lightroom Mobile's AI masking is more or less equivalent to Photomator's, which did a great job copying Lightroom's functionality. Another standout feature of Lightroom is new for 2023, and that is the recently released lens blur feature, which uses AI to mimic a real bokeh. As you can see here, it works great in accurately blurring just the background and making the subject really stand out. You can even adjust the focus point. And as you can see here, changing the focus works impressively, similar to changing focus in a real camera. So there you have it, the top raw editors for the iPad in 2023. No matter which editor you choose, all these apps are excellent and will give you outstanding results with very little compromise. Do let me know if you do your own editing on the iPad and which iPad app you like to use. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.